When I saw her sitting down, I thought that dress was the best dress I've seen in years, if not decades. I fell in love with that dress so much. But then I saw a photo of her standing in that dress. And then I saw that, that thing in the middle and I just went... The biggest night of the film industry and fashion as well is behind us. What a night. We have a lot of things to cover. So in this video, we're going to go through some of the red carpet dresses and then we're going to go through Vanity Fair after party dresses and then we're going to hit the Chanel pre-Oscar dinner which was on Saturday the day before the Oscar night and we're going to talk all about the fashions that we've seen. This is just for entertainment purposes. I don't want to hurt any of the lovely ladies that was on any of these events but you know there are some outfits that if I would be the stylist of that particular person I think I would tell them to not even leave the house looking like that, let alone going to <laughs> the Oscars red carpet. But you know, we have a, an off outfit every year and that's part of the Oscars as well. I'm going to start with my dress if I would be invited to Oscars without having the sponsorship of any of the you know designer houses and I would have to pick whatever I have at home. This is the outfit that I would wear. This is self-portrait dress. And I would pair it with this, not real diamonds, obviously, but it would be nice if they would be real. It would definitely add a particular level of sparkle to my outfit. I'm sorry for the mic. I know it's, it's ruining the whole look, but you know, I want the sound to be as clear as possible. And because I'm going to have to go through the photos on my iPad, I need my hands free. So I need my mic to be on my dress, which doesn't look really nice, but you know, I'll try to cover myself with photos as much as I can. <laughs> With this outfit, I would also I would also wear uh, Miu Miu mules, and I would add Balma earrings. And this is kind of like Balma inspired necklace. I'm going to talk about this jewelry more in one of the next videos because I actually got the original and the dupe, and I will tell you if how they compare to each other and if the original Balma necklace, which is in hundreds of euros, if it's worth it or not. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Veronica. I am a TV presenter and I love fashion and styling and luxury and discovering new brands and I love when we feel amazing because we have an outfit that suits us and we feel powerful in it so that's kind of like the main red line let's say that's kind of like the main line of my channel so if you like any of these topics please do consider subscribing to my channel and of course do like and comment on this video this will help you to promote it to more people and reach more people who are interested in this kind of topic. All right, so if you are ready, let's hit the Oscars 2024 red carpet. So we're going to start with three different trends and then work our way from Vanity Fair party to Oscar red party and just going to see what the trends were. I'm going to start with metallic trend, which was more evident on the Vanity Fair after party uh, red carpet than it was on the Oscars. But we did see a lot of metallics, especially silver. So I think I would blend pretty nicely with this dress. This is a green dress, but all the little stones that you can see are actually silver and you know my accessories are silver so I think I would fit in this metallic trend with what I'm wearing now and this is from my closet if I could choose I think I would love to be sponsored by like Dior or Versace someday so let's dive into metallics and the first metallic dress that I want to start with is Eva Longoria now this dress I love I think Eva just can't go wrong she is so beautiful and I think whatever she puts on looks amazing and this metallic dress even though if you look at it closely it might be a bit too much with everything that's that's going on with this dress but because she kept her jewelry simple and her hair back uh, this dress actually works so for the outfit that I'm wearing if I would actually be going to the Oscars with this I would definitely do something with my hair as well I would put them away from the face to kind of emphasize the jewelry maybe you know on the top of the head or just kind of swipe them back from my face because whenever you have a dress that it's so high up like this one it feels nice to open the face so I would definitely not have my hair like this but you know for the video 
it's it's fine i didn't have a hairstylist here <laughs> in my home to do my hair for me but i would definitely do something with the hair back the next metallic outfit i also love this is elsa she's the wife of uh, chris hemsworth and this dress is just it suits her so well and she followed the rules as well when you have a dress that it's so in your face you really need to be careful what you do with jewelry because the dress that I'm wearing today even though it is full of rhinestones it is subtle color because it's lime green so I can go full on with jewelry but if you have like a full metallic dress it's better to dial it down with the jewelry and accessories because it can just be too much and i will show you the example of too much a bit later next we have nina dobrev she's a model she looks amazing it's a nice dress to me the cutout is not exactly glamorous but that's just my personal style and if there is ever a time to be glamorous that's of course oscar night i like this dress i think it suits her very nice but it's just the cutout on the stomach it's really not to my taste but this is just like my opinion next we have Jess Jessica Alba. Now this dress is borderline of what I was saying before. It's just a bit too much for me because it's metallic with all the big flowers. I would love this dress in any other color but not in metallic. If this would be white, black, red, any other color it would be amazing but metallic with all the flowers for me this is too much. I mean Jessica looks amazing obviously she's an amazing woman and she's gonna look good in everything but this dress would be much better in another color not in metallic i have a special uh, album i put aside all the quirky fun outfits and i was debating to put uh, quinta brunson uh, in there because this dress is kind of like i'm not sure what it wants to be in a way it's a delicate dress but then it's cut so high up that it's way way sexy and then it's metallic and it, it looks like lace and it's see-through. It's just, I mean, she looks amazing in it. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with this outfit. But it's just dress-wise, I think it's just the dress that couldn't decide what it wanted to be. Is it like uh, sexy? Is it glamorous? Is it is it gentle because of the lace? Is it too much because of the see-through? I don't know. I'm not a fan of this dress. Uh, but like I said, you know, she definitely looks amazing in it and now we come to the first look of the evening that uh, that made me go okay what what <laughs> just what diane kruger um it's just this this outfit I, c I can't even call this a dress this outfit is just a mess i mean i love diane she's an amazing woman she looks amazing she's beautiful she's a great actress uh, she has really lovely personality but this outfit it looks like she took things from her closet kind of sewed them together and then ran out of time um, and this for the biggest fashion red carpet in the year it's not just not good enough if this would be like some of the smaller awards we could go like oh it's just her fashion sense she's very out there she likes different looks but this will not hold water at the oscars you know it won't so i'm sorry but to me this is definitely the worst outfit of the evening and then we continue to chrissy teigen and john legend so this metallic dress before i said that the dress didn't know what it wanted to be this dress knows exactly what it wants to be this is a gentle delicate ladylike dress even though it has a lot of see-through parts and Chrissy is showing a lot of skin but she's not showing any of the like decollete the upper tie any of the parts of the skin when we kind of call it it's very sexy so this dress I think it's to me one of the best ones of the metallic ones I really really like this dress she did it perfect now meg ryan now meg has been kind of like missing in action for a number of years but you know i am from the generation that watched her rom-coms in the 90s and she will always be our sweetheart and this is her outfit this is who she is i don't like the outfit whatsoever i think it looks kind of like taking tablecloth and just dip it in metallics it's just really an outfit that i would definitely put on my worst list of the oscars if not for who's actually wearing it this is a perfect outfit for meg ryan you can just see that this is her this represents her character so even though the outfit is definitely not on the best dressed list 
it suits her. It works for her because it kind of complements her character. Laura Karpman, she's the composer, and this outfit, to me, it just says, you know what, I'm happy to be here. I want you to notice me. I want you to know that I am at the Oscars and I'm gonna show everything I've got. And she did it. She did exactly that. It's not fair, but we all know how this big award show go, right? I mean, we pay attention to the A-listers, to very amazing outfits, but, you know, to the... some of the categories are definitely not as noticeable as others. And one of the ways to pay to attract attention and say to people, hello, you know, I'm here too, even though I'm not like an A-list actress or an A-list director or A-list actor, I'm still here, so I deserve to be seen. So I will give her credit for grabbing the attention. And this is, wow. But the outfit itself, it's just, I don't know what bothers me more. The, tr the, the, the jumpsuit, the coat, the jewelry, the bag, the sunglasses, it's just, to me, this is just carnival. This, this is not an outfit uh, and especially not for Oscars. But, you know, if we go from the perspective that I talked about, she did good. That was the metallic trend, that there was loads more, but you know, I don't want this video to be like two hours long, so I just concentrated on some of the names we all know well. And now we're gonna switch to white dresses, and this is still a Vanity Fair after party. So, Kim Kardashian. This dress, to me, is a winner of all the white dresses. She did amazing, and this dress, it suits her so well. And, you know, Kim, she usually knows how to dress herself, she always looks good. But this dress, it was just perfection. The corset, the skirt, the, the length, the hair, everything, it's just perfection. So in white category, so in category of white dresses, my personal winner is definitely Kim Kardashian. Then we have another dress that it's not exactly sure what it wants to be. This is Jennifer Lawrence and this looks kind of like like first communion dress, but slightly too low cut. If it would be a bit higher cut on the chest area, it would be first communion dress. What's going on with this thing and the, the sleeves, it's just... And, you know, give it to Jennifer that she's gonna look good anyway. You know, most of us, if we would go out looking like this, it would be a disaster. But because Jennifer is so charismatic and, of course, beautiful, she can pull off any dress she wants. But that doesn't change the fact that this is not a very, very good outfit. Florence Pew. Oh gosh, Florence. I love her. I think she is one of my top favorite actresses at the moment. I am borderline obsessed with her. She is so fun to watch, fun to listen to her interviews. She's just amazing. But her fashion sense and dress sense, I mean, there's like a joke in the media world that she's on the mission to free the because lately everything she wears, you can see her breasts through and, you know, she was true to that at the Oscars as well. Uh, this outfit, it's just... Oh boy. Um, I think it's kind of like she went to some of the bazaars and wanted to do like a, some sort of a dreamy sequence and then kind of got lost in the way. Um, this outfit, it's all over the place. It do doesn't do anything for her figure, so I'm definitely putting this on the bad dress list. But, you know, it doesn't change the fact that I still love her and I think she is amazing. Sandra Hüller, who is another actress that I adore. I watched her since Tony Erdmann in Cannes years ago and she was in Cannes last year with two films. And both of them were actually nominated at this year's Oscar. The Zone of Interest actually won the Best International Film and The Anatomy of the Fall won Best Original Screenplay, which I'm so happy about. And Sandra Huller did this amazing thing. She had this white dress with this kind of like shoulders for the Vanity Fair party, but she had the opposite black dress with white shoulders for the Oscars. So I think this is pretty cool. It's still in the same kind of like area how she likes to dress, what's her, her um, attitude towards fashion, but very different from the Oscars to the party. So Sandra Huller, yes, I like it. And then we have Olivia Moon who did the same thing. She had uh, black for the Oscars and then white here for the Vanity Fair. It's a nice dress, is nothing exceptional about it, but it's a good dress and it suits her. So 
well done. Now we are moving to black dresses. We are still at Vanity Fair and this is Charlize Theron and to me because she is kind of like not a very cheerful person that kind of dress it's the same thing as I said for Meg Ryan. It represents who she is, her character, the way we know her. I don't love the dress. I don't I don't like how it looks but for, for Charlize she pulls it off because it's her character behind the outfit and this is a typical example of a uh, person actually wearing a dress and not the other way around because this dress on a different person would just not work and on her it kind of does right rosie huntington whitley rosie is always safe she has nice dresses they always look amazing on her but she always played safe we just there's nothing wrong with that and this dress even with the you know kind of like a side boob and a long train it's still a safe bed with a black dress I like it but again it doesn't it's not a standout for me then we have another lady that I adore and that's Billie Eilish well her sense of style has been quirky over the years we all know that she wore a lot of oversized clothing then there was like one year when she actually went with a corset and slightly different dresses but now it looks like she went back to all the oversized stuff and this is kind of like I mean she's wearing Chanel in both outfits and this I would not wear if you pay me let alone that I would have to pay for the outfits to wear them and it's nothing to do with Billie Eilish I mean she you know it's her style again she pulls it off because it's her it's so her that you don't mind it's the same with like you're gonna see later with Kristen Stewart I mean she has a quirky style and it works for her so there's nothing wrong with that we don't mind but to me it's just because it's Chanel it should be I feel like it should be more desirable and this outfit is just apart from occasional necklace uh, I would say no thank you or you know to use the Ariana Grande song thank you next <laughs> then we have Olivia Wilde another usual black dress I mean it is like plunge neckline but the fun part is we didn't see a lot of those in this year's Oscars we've seen a lot of cutouts and of course sexy dresses but not plunging necklines and I'm so happy about it because I have been complaining about this in previous videos because if you have a bigger chest you cannot wear a dress like this it just looks so cheap and you know when this is everywhere where every red carpet has a plunging neckline and you don't because you can't wear this it just makes me sad so I, I'm glad to see that this trend is at least slightly turning of course everybody who wants to wear these dresses can but it's just nice to see that it's not dominant on the red carpet anymore then we have Sofia Vergara another lady who looks amazing in whatever she puts on this is it's nothing special black dress is a nice black dress but again it's not a standout and then we have Vanessa Hudgens who announced with her red carpet interviews that uh, she's uh, pregnant and it looks like she's pretty far along and this dress is fine too it's again to me it's nothing special but given how far along she is in her pregnancy you know whatever she decides to wear is perfect because I can only imagine how it must feel to be that pregnant and doing a red carpet and the Oscars and posing for all these photographers so whatever you want to do Vanessa that's fine then we have Jennifer Coolidge who is again a very very special lady and actress and I love her I loved her since Friends probably uh, when she was the fake British Amanda friend of Monica if you remember that episode I loved her since then and I think she's she's you know she's everybody's darling and again this outfit is fine to me it's just not it doesn't say Oscars as much but you know it's fine and let me point something else out Jennifer is over 60 okay and she's rocking this outfit she's definitely rocking it so age is just a number remember that the next time you're bludgering yourself because how old you are and how you have to dress and what you have to change age is nothing but a number if you believe in that you can rock dresses like this when you're 80. Uh, this is amazing Margot Robbie. I've met her once and she's the loveliest person you can ever imagine. I think she is an amazing actress and I really kind of felt sorry that she didn't get nominated but to be honest Emma Stone was so powerful in poor things that even if she would get nominated I really really doubt that she would have a chance this year just because Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone as well obviously but Emma Stone was my personal favorite 
and I don't think anybody could beat her this year. So this dress is, as I think I read, by Versace. It's a nice dress. It's, you know, it's Margot Robbie. Again, whatever you're going to put her in, she's going to look amazing. But to me, this dress is just not Oscars. I mean, she had the biggest film of last year. It doesn't matter that she was not nominated. She was there riding the wave of Barbie. And I know she probably got sick of all the pink dresses she had to wear, uh, all the Barbie outfits um, over the last few months while promoting the film to Academy voters, but still, this is just not an Oscar dress. So if we dive to Oscar red carpet, now I want to talk about Emma Stone. This is actually Louis Vuitton. Um, and it's not my favorite outfit, but again, Emma is a bit quirky and this outfit kind of works for her. She had a bit of a malfunction. I think she was dancing too hard to Ryan Gosling performing I'm Just Can and the zipper kind of broke on her bag. So during her acceptance speech, she had to say her dress was broken, which I think was so cute. And I love moments like this because we're all just human. Things happen, you know, and I'm glad she embraced it, that she didn't feel like she she should be embarrassed because of that because like you know things like this happen and above all I'm happy that she won uh, for best actress because really since last year's Venice Film Festival I've been saying that she definitely has to have a statue uh, in March because she was just so amazing in poor things and then I want to talk about Carrie Mulligan who is kind of like sidelined because there were so many more talk about other actresses who were nominated that we kind of forget that Maestro was pretty big in in nominations this year. It went away empty-handed but we still have a lot of cool outfits to go through and this is the black and white dress that she wore to the Oscars red carpet and again it's one of those situations when I don't really like the dress but it suits the character it suits her you always have to think about that it's not just about the dress but it's who is wearing it and how do they present themselves in this dress and and Carrie Mulligan did a great job I think this dress it's it's her it screams Carrie Mulligan so I'm gonna give her kudos for that. So I already talked about some quirky styles of Billie Eilish and now we're gonna dive into some of the other outfits that were very interesting. So Pamela Anderson. Pamela Anderson has this thing lately where she goes everywhere makeup free which is you know great if she feels liberated in this way. I have to say I admire her. I cannot imagine going to the biggest night of the year without a makeup, without trying to look the best that I can. And for that, I'm gonna give her so much credit because this is so refreshing. Uh, and again, this dress, it's just, it suits her, but it's just not the Oscars. This is not an outfit for the Oscars, even if it is Vanity Fair party and not the Oscar red carpet, it's still not the outfit for the biggest night of the year. And then we have Andrea Risborough. She's been known to have quirky outfits throughout her years in the spotlight. And and she didn't disappoint. I mean, do you remember years ago when Bjork wore that swan dress? Everybody was talking about it for years to come. And I think this is part of the appeal when you wear something that is so out there that you want to be remembered, you want to, you know, kind of stand out with, with all the glamorous ladies uh, alongside you on the red carpet it must be difficult to choose what to wear and I kind of admire people who go all the way out to to wear things like this obviously it's not my style and I, I think it's it's a bizarre outfit but you know kudos to her she can you know she's always dressed kind of like out there so it works for her. Then we have Cynthia Arrivo. Now for Cynthia I love her but I have to say for this particular outfit I cannot say that it works for her character and that she pulls it off because this dress just looks like something from an alien film that's gonna eat her alive. It just the color, the cut, the embellishments, the back of it, it's just it screams no. So this is definitely one of the outfits that if it would be up to me, I would say, please don't leave the house like this, wear something else. Then we have Erika Alexander. Now this again is the dress look at me, I'm here too. This is my assumption because otherwise I really do not understand why with all the designer options, why would you choose this? To me this speaks only that, you know, I just want to stand out and if 
weird dresses is the only way I can do that, then I'll do that. Um, this is kind of like, you know, in Cannes, uh, what happens is a lot of times you would have uh, new or up and coming models who are not very well known yet. And they would have these really risque dresses that you would be afraid they're going to just fall off them and show everything. And of course they never do because they make sure they never do. And this kind of launches their careers. I mean, Bella Hadid did this in Cannes years ago and you know, it put her on the map. So of course, Oscars is a different game. So you cannot go practically naked, uh, you know, some try, but it's not, it's not the red carpet to do that. So what they do is like, they try to stand out in other ways. And this dress, I can't even comment on it. It's just, <laughs> this dress is just sad, but you know, we are talking about her. So I guess plan worked if this of course was her plan. Chrissy Marshall. She's that's another outfit that it just gives me a headache. My favorite combinations of outfits, especially for evening and, and premieres and things like that, is black and gold. I'm in love with this combination and whenever I can, I will wear black and gold for sure. But this is the example of how this can go so wrong. If this, the whole thing would be black and she would just wear this kind of like belt, corset, jewelry thing, it would actually work. The way it is now, this is just, oh boy. Um, yeah, now we are going to Chanel dinner. A lot of fashion houses uh, do pre-Oscar dinners or parties from, you know, in the week leading up to the Oscars. And Chanel dinner was in one of the hotels in LA on Saturday evening, a day before Oscars. So obviously if you go to Chanel dinner, you're not gonna wear you know, Gucci or Versace or Louis Vuitton, you're gonna wear Chanel. And if you don't have any Chanel ready to wear, uh, then you're gonna have Chanel accessories. And this is the first look I wanna talk about because this is exactly what I would do if I would be lucky enough to actually be invited to this dinner. I do not have any Chanel ready to wear, but I do have some of their um, belts and necklaces, uh, custom jewelry. And this is what I would do. I would pick uh, like a nice black outfit and just throw all the jewelry I have from Chanel uh, on top of it, like Usher's wife did. This is definitely my style. Keep it in mind, this is dinner. This is not Oscar or Oscar after party red carpet. For those two events, this outfit would not work, but for dinner in a fancy hotel, for sure, yes. And this is definitely the closest, uh, second closest outfit that I would wear if I had a chance to uh, Chanel dinner. The second one I'm gonna show you is my favorite, and this is Jennifer Meyer, and she's here with Jeffrey Ogunlezi, and I hope I pronounced that right. And this outfit to me is just perfect. It's a, a little black dress with a Chanel twist, and you know, we, we, I can't see which bag she's having, but I would definitely have like a little Chanel bucket bag with this. And this is the perfect outfit from all of the Chanel dinner outfits that I've seen. As far as my style is concerned, I love this outfit. So I already mentioned uh, Kristen Stewart. I mean, her style is legendary. She always does something weird and unexpected and she pulls it off because again, it's her character and it works for her. But this particular outfit, I have a bit of a problem with it because those shorts to me look like men's boxer shirts and the bra she's wearing, even though it is like a combination of black and white, it's just more, it feels more like leisurely outfit to stroll around the sun deck of your Malibu house than going to a Chanel dinner. I mean, it doesn't matter that she's like a spokesperson of Chanel, that she's in with the in crowd. This outfit, it just doesn't do anything for me. And usually I like what Kristen wears, even though it's not my style, but this outfit, it's just, it, it doesn't work. She's wearing Chanel ankle boots with it. This, I kind of like that she paired ankle boots with these shorts but again I would not call these shorts this to me looks exactly like men's underwear but you know this is just my eyes then we have Lily Rose Depp now again she's young she's beautiful she's you know she has a fit body again she can wear whatever and she's gonna look good this combination I'm not very crazy about uh, I don't mind the corset and the skirt but I would definitely pair it with different shoes and different back and she is also Chanel muse or spokesperson for the young generation so I guess she has access to a lot of Chanel items which is why I would like her to play a bit more and combine you know shoes bags with 
outfit a bit more than she did in this particular outfit. Now we have Carrie Washington. This outfit is so funky, I love it. It's not, I would not go to dinner in a fancy hotel dressed like this, even though it is Chanel, but it works so well for Carrie and she was definitely noticeable because most of the ladies wore either black with accessories or some pink tweets you're gonna see later. Uh, this is definitely a unique combination of outfits. I'm guessing the skirt is Chanel as well judging by the buttons but I haven't seen this skirt in their collection so I'm not sure but I love the way she combined it with the bag and with the uh, necklace, the chokers. This to me is more lunch than dinner but you know we're gonna let that one slide because she looks amazing. We're gonna move to pinks soon. Uh, the next black outfit is really black outfit. This is Tessa Thompson and she wore uh, all leather. She was not the only one for the dinner but uh, this is the first outfit that I'm gonna show you and this is a shirt and leather trousers. From the sheen of it I assume it's vegan leather. I'm not sure but real leather doesn't usually have that kind of sheen. So I'm guessing is, is vegan, but I don't know. And the next leather outfit is this one. This is Olivia Moon and she's wearing Chanel leather long coat. Now this outfit for a dinner, I don't know what she's wearing underneath because I really doubt that she was sitting behind the table having a lovely dinner wearing this coat all buttoned up the whole night because this would be very uncomfortable. Gracie Abrams, this Chanel leather jacket, I actually had my eye on it but the price was just out of my reach but I really loved it. I love the pink uh, color and you know it's I would have paired it with a, the same color trousers not black black just to kind of really pop up the color but I like this jacket very much and I think it's perfect for uh, Chanel dinner. Then we have two pink tweets and first is Chloe Sevigny and this outfit it's again I'm emphasizing this is dinner so it's nice. I don't like the shoes so much with this. I mean white shoes are fine just not this particular style. And then the next one is Alexandra Ship. She was also in Barbie which you can probably tell because <laughs> this outfit just screams Barbie. It's a cute outfit. I like it and you know it's a dinner event so again it's fine. Another pink tweet is Sandra Hüller. This outfit is pretty funky and it suits her very nice. I don't really like what she did to her hair with this outfit but Sandra is uh, a special lady again and I think this outfit suits her very well. Then I want to show you Margot Robbie. She, this outfit I love for dinner. I think it's amazing. I hope the feathers were well made so the feathers would not be in her foot all the time but it looks amazing. I would probably wear a different type of shoes. I would not wear strappy sandals with this kind of dress uh, but I love the outfit and I love the bag. And then we have the cool French Justine Trier. She was also wearing uh, trousers for the Oscars and it's just somebody who has their sense of style and their way of dressing so strongly embedded with, with their character, with their personality, that they can actually wear whatever to wherever and it's not going to bug you. Here, Justin Trier just proved my point. I mean, can you imagine anybody, anybody else going to Chanel dinner before the Oscar night dressed like this and you wouldn't see a lot of raised eyebrows? and for her it works perfectly. It just speaks this is Justine. The last dress of this video is the dress that I would say most people talk about it today and that's Emily Blunt's dress. When I saw her sitting down with this kind of like oversized straps I loved it. I thought this was the most amazing dress ever and it suited her so well and then I saw the photo of her arriving on the red carpet and I saw this triangle thing and I just went... <laughs> this is an example how one thing on the dress can ruin the dress. I really like everything else but this thing is just what the heck guys? I mean what is that? It's again somebody we love and again somebody who looks amazing and can wear whatever and, and she you know she looked amazing in this dress as well but it's just oh ugh. so this is definitely one of the dresses that's going to go down in history of how you can do 
perfect dress while you're sitting down and then ruin everything <laughs> when you stand up. Okay, we managed to get through most of the dresses I wanted to talk about. Let me know if there's like any dress that you notice, which was your favorite outfit. Is there, you know, this is the part, is the fun part. When we talk about which outfits we all liked or didn't like or where we disagree, where we agree. And I would really love to hear your opinion. So hit me up in the comments, which is your favorite dress. Have an amazing day. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.